All right, so if you guys haven't followed, uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I mean, you probably should, but I always put tons of cool pictures up there. Um, my GT3 was eaten by mice, or a, I think a single mouse. Yeah, I'm borderline depressed. What's up, guys? How you doing? Right over here. So here's the... Hey, Josh. How you doing? Uh, and the, the thing that was so disgruntling on my GT3 is that, you know, the mouse ate, like, the like the very ends of the grommets, and, and the dealer wanted to do a whole new harness. So I, I went up there, and and we're talking about, you know, options about repairing it. You know, because the mouse didn't just eat through the wires where we could just put them back together. It really messed things up. The tail light and the and the darn the main harness you know and i wanted to be perfect it's my freaking gt3 for gosh sakes um and so while i was standing there and just talking about the lesser of of two evils one tear the entire car apart interior headliner seats dash every because the, the the main harness that connects the mouse chewed up in the front area chewed through it and the main harness wraps around through the car and, and then you know, back to the tail lights and to the motor and everything, to the DME. And, and so it was you know, the, the, the one option to make it perfect, to make it factory-like, is to tear the whole thing apart, which of course, you know the thing's not going back together again. So that was a bad option versus doing a really professional uh, job of, of you know, cutting out the piece that was all jacked up uh, and, and, and replacing it. The problem is, is you still have to buy the whole harness. The harness is eighty six, eighty seven hundred dollars. Do they eat any of my audio system? Uh, there is a little bit of damage there, but that's small. That's easily fixed. That's no big yeah. deal. Yeah. This is where the biggest problem is. Um, oh, they had to freaking bite it right at the very end. Exactly, huh? and that's that's the issue, is being able to fix. As you can see, there's at least one wire at least one i don't know the so this one is in there somewhere too so this can't be i mean could we cut well, it off here well, and you don't want to do that because that's what seals it into your to the inside you know this is watertight yeah, yeah. you also have a problem down here this is why the fuel gauge doesn't work because those wires are completely yeah. in half and yesterday i found another well the tail light went out first well Something. yeah that's why that stopped working first. They got that first. So that's obviously a problem. So the main harness, I mean, means headliner, interior, motor. I have a picture. I'll show you. Oh my gosh, man. My freaking. That is the harness in question. And that tells you where it goes. It is literally front to back, side to side. It's all on it. But I mean, is the car going to go back together again? <laughs> I mean, it'll go back together again. Yeah. Well, is it? Is it? I mean, as close to Stuttgart perfect as possible. Absolutely. You think? Because that's my fear: is that now my car? I mean, you're literally taking out every, every panel, every, every piece. Everything. It's going to be sitting on the side every, here. Correct. And then does it go back together again? I mean, we take cars apart all the time. And that's what we do. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that will you not pick up a rattle or two? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I don't you know, it's just what's what's worse, pulling the entire car apart or having janky wires. <laughs> See, the thing that sucks is this happened like within three weeks. I bought a GT350 and I was detailing it, so the car was clean, covered, sitting there. I don't know. So what would you do? Tear it apart? I'm an extremely angry person. Um, I really kind of nitpick things. Yeah, for me, that's probably the way I would do it. But I'll also be straight with you. Do I want to take your car, entire car apart? I do not. Um, because I have a feeling we're going to be, it's going to be other issues. Is that the right way to fix it? Um, by the way, I'm stopping at Ace Hardware on the way home and I'm going to buy a freaking nuclear bomb below that freaking building up. All right, people. I'm not messing around. I'm going to get some crap to kill these things. I got traps everywhere. I mean, all around the perimeter and <laughs> nothing. I haven't caught anything. I don't think I have. It's going to be a while before I, you know, if you, if you guys watched my last video, it's going to be a while before I put a, a garage out here. 
I want to take my time and do it right and enjoy the process. But in the meantime, I'm out in the middle of the woods and, and there's risks that, uh, that rodents and things can mess with my crap. So I bought this. Uh, I tried to talk them into giving me one, but that didn't happen. So I bought this. This is called a uh, car capsule showcase. Uh, and the, the showcase is the version that's designed to go inside of your garage or inside of your warehouse or under you know, cover. It's not designed to be out in the elements. Um, but I'm going to set this thing up so that once I do get my GT3 back, by the way, it was uh, 14,400 and change in damage. And thank goodness that my insurance covered it. Um, uh, if you haven't watched my insurance video um, about transitioning, I'm so glad that I transitioned to you know, Chubb Insurance. But the the, the idea here is, is that the, the showcase will be something that I can drive in and out of. Uh, I've wanted to buy this thing since it first came out, uh, it, or actually before it came out, I was following it, but it wouldn't fit in my previous garage uh, back at the old house. It wouldn't fit. It was just too big it would have taken up the entire garage and I really mainly wanted it just to park my GT3 in there so my kids wouldn't mess it up but instead I decided to invest in the time in teaching my kids how to properly deal with my car but uh, this thing is I think it was 1600 bucks um, but but last thing I want to happen is I bring my GT3 back out here and then that my seat it again I'm freaking screwed um, so I called Chubb and Chubb you know helped me they, they paid for the whole thing I just had to pay my deductible um, but I don't want that to happen again um, and then to top it all off we're going around the car and I'm you know I'm just beside myself uh, and and I'm walking the back and they said we got one more bit of bad news uh, I was like what else, what else what else could be worse and I didn't think there would be anything could be worse and sure enough, they taking out the tail light, they gouge the rear bumper. <laughs> so the rear bumper needs to be repainted, which is like my worst freaking nightmare. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to tell myself it's just a car. Uh, I literally almost freaking started crying right there. I just walked out, and, you know, it swallowed my, swallowed the frog in my throat. I don't think I've cried since I was like 12 years old. Um, but uh, in fact, Michelle says I don't have any emotion, but my gosh. Anyway, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to unbox this and set this thing up. First, what I'm going to do is blow this area out. Um, looks like washing the, uh, um, the, looks like we're starting to build up a bunch of brake dust in here. So I'm probably going to want to blow this thing out too with the, uh, with the pressure washer. But I'm going to set up the, the car capsule. Uh, I'm going to come in and wash the GT350. So I haven't done a proper first wash video. Uh, and then I'm going to pull the GT350 into the showcase. The showcase is going to go back here. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to fit perfectly um, in, you know, in the back of the trailer. So this will be like the little compound area to park the, the GT3 or the GT350. You know, whichever car I'm not driving that week, um, the showcase will will hold or house the car uh, and I'll talk you through some of the some of the specs of how this thing looks in, in a minute. This is my favorite thing in the world by the way my Chris Reeve knife that the guys from knifeart.com sent me and things freaking awesome. This is the large version darn fanciest knife in the world for opening boxes. Um, but basically the thing's made up of two parts. It's the big giant plastic bubble uh, and then the fan, I think. So there's a fan assembly that circulates air through it. And so a couple of things that are a byproduct for, for rodents. One, this is made out of PEX or plastic. Uh, and apparently the plastic is not you know, very tasty to, to rodents. Uh, secondly, the fan, um, the operating frequency, which we you know, humans can't hear, is also naturally a deterrent. So hopefully we won't have any issues. Uh, I got freaking traps all over the place around here and nothing. So I, I swear to you, I think it was one mouse. Like, just really bad luck. It's the, it's the universe telling me, don't love your car so much. Because it's just a freaking car. Oh, 
this is the fan. I guess it has it might have multiple fans. So here's your Velcro in fan assembly, power supply, filter for the fan. All right, we'll get to that when we get to the directions. What a great experience. Unboxing with a really fancy knife. This thing weighs, I think it's like 100, and, 100, yeah, 100 pounds, 45 kilos. Josh and Jared are here helping me bag up all the, all the shirts, hats and everything. Should probably put the knife away now. Try to cut a hole in this thing. I think it just rolls out. So let's do. I think this might be the front. It's 200 inches long. And I think they come out like super wrinkly and then over time it settles and looks pretty. So we're going to remove it, unfold it. We're gonna move the air pump and the two hoses. Then we're gonna put it on the inlet. All right, let's see. So this thing, I guess goes here. I should put this on first. All right, so we take this hose, put it on here, and then I guess I'm just going to simply plug it in. Deflate, inflate. Underneath. So you're going to have to read the directions. <laughs> Is that cool or what? I guess. Because, I, I mean, I'm assuming if it got too tight, it would pop, right? I right. do you know how tight to fill it. It just says once it's fully inflated. <clears throat> yeah, no, during inflation, you may require to assist. Once it's fully inflated, you may remove, remove the inflation hose and relocate the pump to the inside of the showcase. Attach the smooth maintenance hose 
Be sure to attach the quarter inch pressure port. I guess let me get this thing positioned where I want it. And it fits perfectly here, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could bring it out another foot or two if you still don't have access to the trailer. Yeah, I don't think I need to. Okay. I'd rather push it back. Almost push it right up against the trailer once I get the fan in there. And then I think this plastic just kind of flattens out over time. The wrinkles kind of go away. I at least I hope they do. This is where you exit. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let me start from scratch here. Unfold it, remove the air pump and two hoses from the box. Okay, we did that. Attach it and inflate it. So then how do we get the power cord into the showcase? Plug the power cord for the pump unit into the receptacle label pump connection and plug three, the three terminal grounded power cord from the pump into the working power source and turn on the pump. When your showcase is fully inflated, air columns will become firm and offer resistance when put pressure is applied. Check. Once the showcase is fully inflated, you may remove the inflation hose and relocate the pump to the inside of the showcase. See figure five. Attach the smooth maintenance hose as you did with the inflation hose, be sure to attach the quarter inch tube to the pressure port. Okay, so this thing goes, and then there must be another gray, yeah, there's another gray thing on that side. Okay, so that's what must keep the air. The underside of the pump unit. Be sure to attach the quarter inch tube, that's this, to the pressure port on the underside of the pump unit. This will allow the pump to cycle as needed to maintain inflation to your showcase column. Okay, so the pressure tube tells it when to turn on and off, I guess. Install the 12 volt fan. Okay, so there's a small little underneath here for the uh, power. Okay. So the power goes to there, then the fan comes in here. Gotcha. I've got the trailer connected here so that I got the, the, you know, the trickle charger so for now, I'm going to run from this outlet over here to the showcase. But I think I'll probably probably have an you know electrician come out and wire in this permanently. You're not. You're. You're doing a terrible cameraman job. <laughs> what are you doing? You're supposed to be following me around. He, he thought you were coming over on this. Side. I'm better with a camera by myself. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> Grab the mouse trap on the wrong side. I just don't want to see it on the other side. up. Probably get some zip ties. Not right in here. Now there's a hole in the bottom of this thing. Run the power cord through. All right, so I'm gonna go inside, set this thing all up. So I think what happens is this tube senses pressure and then tells the, the thing when to turn on. But 
wish they didn't put their freaking name on the front of the thing. It's kind of annoying. Let's see if I can get that off. That's a uh, classic car owner move right there. Accessories are key. Any accessories are possible. And then these little straps, I guess you could use to hold that up. But we're gonna pull one of these moves every time I come in here. <laughs> Although I guess my tires are gonna mess it up, aren't they? My kids are gonna go nutty over this thing. <laughs> the pump. To itself, like so, and then the fan, so the main assembly plugs in, and then the fan and pump plug into itself. We're losing air. This would have been smarter to hook this up first. Let's do this a little smarter. So then this comes up under here. Tells the thing when to turn on. the pressure must be good if the thing's not cycling right we'll find out when I come out one day and the thing's laying on my car okay let me put the fan the fan comes in what's this business all about Circulating, and then to get out. Just walk out. Go out either side. I would think. So I'm gonna want to back in. And I can just go out that side. Finger. Let's chop my finger off. Yeah. The only difference is they put it in from the outside, but I don't think that really. 
But the ring, the ring sits on the inside here. Because mm -hmm. the way they have it, you're actually kind of pushing the ring, the larger ring, in through this outside. Okay, well, either way, I mean. Yeah, yep. It's hard to tell the out. Yeah, because they've got the fan on first. Yeah, but now how the heck does the fan stay? Is that not enough Velcro? Cool. Showcase installed. All right, so the showcase fan is running. We've got the, the pump is active. And notice I still have plenty of room to walk and exit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I wanna put the car in here, I'm gonna back it in. But this will buy me, buy me some time. Wow, it's cool, it's like pressurized in there with the fan going. I think, you know, over time the plastic evens out. At least I hope so, because it looks wrinkly. wrinkly. So, you know, whatever car is clean that isn't being driven that week will sit in here, hide out in here so that I don't have to, I don't have issues with anything. Dirt, dust, bugs, rats, mice. Man, this thing is cool. I mean, I know I want I want to build a garage tomorrow, but it's just not going to happen. So this, it's clean, neat, easy. I mean, it's going to be a pain in the butt when I got to get the trailer out, but I only get that out twice a year anyway to go to the mountains. Super cool. Yeah, with the fan going, it pressurizes it and pushes everything out. Yeah. I guess it's not just a wall. And hopefully that fan scares away stuff. Or shreds it. Yeah. Like my finger. That's awesome. force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. The floor.